Hey, it's Kellen. And of course, AO. And today, I hope you guys are ready to get your game on with getting your gratitude on, because I have that gratitude guy, David George Brook, here to let us know why gratitude is so important, how he has been successful in preaching this message of gratitude all around the country, maybe even the world. Let's find out. Hey, David Brook, how are you doing, sir? Well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing great. Always, uh, as you just said, uh, Kellen, always full of gratitude. That's true. Tell, tell us, and while people tell us, I want them to go to thatgratitudeguy.com because Correct. you are that guy. He's okay, also on YouTube. Thanks. He's written books on it. How, where does this come from of that gratitude guy? Well, it started with uh, actually before being that gratitude guy, I was wanting, always wanting to be a speaker. I, it was something that happened to me at about 19 years old when I was out giving a talk at a high school, and it was about motivation and so forth, and it was a teacher I'd had from the previous year, and he said, can you come and talk to the students? So I did, and I talked about a half hour, and I got back in my car, and I was literally 19 at the University of Washington as a freshman, and I thought, I want to be a motivational speaker someday. And it was just one, something that never left me. And you hear that about people, you know, occasionally you hear somebody say uh, at five years old, they wanted to be a doctor. And it wasn't quite that young for me, but it was at 19. And it took me about 45 years to really realize the dream and break out on my own about six or seven years ago. But along the way, I'd had a lot of tragedies, a lot of bad things that had happened to me. And one day it was really pivotal. A, a good friend of mine says to me, um, you need to get a gratitude journal. And I said, what's a gratitude journal? And he says, well, it's a book you write in uh, every day or every so often or whatever about everything you're grateful for. And so I ordered one on Amazon and started writing and it just shifted my whole mindset. I just noticed everything was different because I was focusing on what I had versus what I didn't have. And it just really uh, made such a change. I thought, well, I think that's my subject. I think that's what I'm going to do. So along the way, people kept saying, well, you, we heard you talk. You're that gratitude guy. And in fact, it was funny because recently I was in a Starbucks where I spent a lot of time doing a lot of my work and communication, working on books. And this guy comes up to me and he goes, you're, you're, you're that optimistic guy. <laughs> I went, well, <laughs> I, uh, I am optimistic, but it's actually the gratitude guy, that gratitude guy. So, but that's what it, it started. And it sort of fulfilled my dream of both being a motivational speaker and at the same time having a platform that I could really get behind because it really helped me. And one of my closing lines I say in a lot of my talks is it can help your life. It can transform your life. It can change your life. And in many cases it can save your life because you're focusing on what you have. So it really has been a tremendous uh, vehicle for me to uh, not only help myself, but certainly to help other people. And as they say, if you want to help yourself, help other people and it works every time. So it just has been a great journey just these last six or seven years. And that proves my theory, Al, that every good nickname, someone else has to give it to you because, mm -hmm. you know, somebody will be like, hey, that's Skinny Larry or even my, my name, Kellen Cash. I didn't give myself the name Cash, mm -hmm. but, you know, um, they named you. So it was almost right. like you were crowned, knighted, whatnot. Right. So that, that's, that, that's an awesome thing. And you took it the name made the website that we want everyone to go to the website and you can see the description box and, and just click on that. But you started writing books on it and even created your own journal. What sparked that? Yes, correct. And it started, um, we, you and I looked at it, Kellen, the other day and it was the original nickname I had is the Brooker, uh, which is something I got from college days and, and I call it the Brooker's daily gratitude journal. And so I put that together and really just as, again, as a vehicle, I tell people it takes five minutes every day to write in this journal. And so I started with that because I wanted to have something to give people or have them buy or what have you when I went to my talks. And there's a little saying in the upper right-hand corner of the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal that says, you think about it, it's like a dream. If you talk about it, it inspires you. But if you write about it, it empowers you. And there's something really powerful about taking this pen I am so grateful to Kellen Coleman and AL for inviting me today that plants it in your brain like nothing else. And it really, really that lets, kind of does its work, if you will. And so on that, I, so I sort of spun that off to the journal, to other books. There's one 
called Happiness Starts with Gratitude, which has 50 stories of how gratitude impacted my life. And then that person can use those to relate to. And then I recently did a new book called Six Word uh, books, uh, six word book series, uh, 100 lessons to embrace gratitude. And it's got little chunks of, of, of gratitude for every day for a hundred days. So it was really to give people something to take with them from the talk, as well as, um, uh, a lot of places that I talk want to buy something for every person, attend a person that's attending. So they each get a, a book or something as a, as a way to reinforce it once they leave. Mm -hmm. And so that plus it's interesting too the website that is the fourth iteration of that website as I've changed and it's sort of been remodeled and updated and, and the latest version I'm the happiest with because it's the, one of the things on the front of it is a picture of me speaking to 10,000 soldiers at Joint Base Lewis McCord. And it's really neat because it was 5,000 soldiers at 10 o'clock, 5,000 at two o'clock. And here are the soldiers that deal tremendously with PTSD issues, suicide issues, 22 soldiers take their life every single day, uh, active or retired, and it's really had a chance to make an impact. So then the U.S. Army has bought a lot of gratitude journals for them. So it's really been neat to see it get that extended that far. Wow, that, that's super impressive. Uh, David, here's a question for you. Um, how important is or should gratitude be in someone's life? Great question, Al. I, I think that it's probably no surprise you hear me say that it should be very important. I look at it as as important as brushing your teeth. I wouldn't think I just took a shower and got cleaned up and brushed my teeth. I got to get ready for Kellen and, a, and uh, AL. And you wouldn't not brush your teeth. And so to me, I put it as, as that important because it's really always reframing your mind. And, and one of the things that I tell people is one of my great sayings that uh, I got somewhere is gratitude turns what you have into enough. And we do this constant, I want to be as handsome as AL. I want to be <laughs> as, as uh, loquacious as Kelly. I mean, we're always comparing to the people, faster, bigger, better, better cars, better house, better, oh, for goodness sakes. You would just realize that you look what you have and you focus on that. And all of a sudden it looks so much better and it's enough. And it isn't that you're always, you know, going after something else. So to me, there's a, um, uh, back to your question, AL. The brush your teeth, uh, take your shower, take your vitamins, drink your water. I always drink V8 juice in the morning, write in your gratitude journal, make your bed, you know, get dressed. I mean, it's just, it should be just something that, that uh, much a part of the day. And it's, and one of the things when I do my keynotes and talks and things, I, I give a lot of stories that things have happened to me to prove my point. And mm -hmm. both of both my sons, my sons were, four and 14 when their mom, my wife died. And it was very difficult, especially for my four year old Connor. And so gratitude has become a big part of their life as well as we all bounce back from that episode or that really tragic situation. And when you keep focusing, focusing, focusing on all that you have, both of them had some real setbacks but I think having a father and then them themselves embracing gratitude and making it a part of their day, just as much as brushing your teeth really help them to be, to get where they are today. So, so to answer the question, it's, I think it's a huge, should be a huge part of every person's day. Nice. Thanks. I love it. Love it. Yeah. Here's a, here's a follow up. Mm -hmm. um, well, with people implementing more of a, a, a mindset of a gratitude, uh, you know how they say 21 days to form a habit. What mm -hmm. have you seen in the people that you've helped? Um, happen to them or with them going through this process of becoming more mindful of their gra being gra gracious. And I, I've certainly, I've certainly seen it shift and you know, there's common uh, thought 21 days, as you said, 30 days, it takes so many days to do an impression, uh, to make mm -hmm. an impression or make a change. And I'm kind of of the belief that it can happen like that. And it doesn't have to take 21 days. It's just a matter of shifting and, when people start focusing on what they're grateful for, everything just looks better. In fact, uh, one of the stories that, that I, I tell around that is I was working for Nordstrom and I was uh, the, the manager of the suit department. 
and I was having all the success and I was, I had my little suit on every day and my briefcase and I, I, I wouldn't talk to anybody. I just go down to my department and you'd come in every morning and, and it's show the departments with the, the top increases. And there's always men's suits, David Brooke. And everybody was like, well, there's that suit guy, you know, but I thought I was that in the bag of chips, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but I, I never talked to people. So one day I'm in the lunchroom and this guy comes up to me and he points his finger. There's the camera. Uh, are you David Brooke? You're the suit guy, right? And I went, yeah. He goes, can I tell you what the word is on you? And I went, um, yeah, sure. He goes, the word on you is everybody in this store thinks you think you're hot. You know what? Hot stuff. You don't talk to anybody. You walk around your little suit, your little starch, your little shiny shoes. You know, and he goes, everybody thinks you think you're just the, all that. And I went, wow. And he goes, you got a really bad reputation. And he says, one of the biggest things is you don't talk to anybody. You just don't talk to anybody. And I went, Jiminy. So I stuck my hand out and I shook his hand and I said, uh, what's your name again, Steve? And I shook his hand. And I said, thank you. I said, thank you for having the guts to, uh, to tell me that. That means a lot to me. And I turned around. I walked out the door, literally snapped my fingers. I started saying hi to everybody. Everybody, AL, what's happening? You know, what's happening? Kellen, how you doing? How's the family? Bob, the, the two little elevators that crisscross each other, they don't go any faster if you say hi. You know, it just, it, they go at the same speed. Hey, what's going on here? Completely change it. That was snapping my fingers and changing behavior that quickly. And so to me, that's how fast gratitude can change you if you allow it. And because one of the things I get almost kind of militant about it, I offer it as a tremendous coping, uh, coping mechanism in a world of way too many deadly, destructive, terrible coping mechanisms. My wife passed away of a prescription pill overdose. She was 38 years old. We'd met at Nordstrom and beautiful gal. And she just you got hooked on Vicodin and Oxycontin and stuff like that. And then she died. And uh, Connor and Kyle and I are there. We tried to revive her and it was just a really sad, it's been now 20 years now because they're 25 and 35 now. But it's just that that's, that's somebody other's way of coping or that let me take these pills or take this drink or do whatever. And here's this gratitude mindset, this gratitude journal, this ability to focus on what you have versus what you don't have. It's so cool what it, how fast it can change you. And I'm grateful for you guys just inviting me to the podcast. I mean, thank you. This is, I mean, w w what happened when we went all this, something has to be bigger and better and farther and beyond and all this kind of thing. And so it's interesting if you just, focus on what you have. It just makes everything better. And people notice this. I think it can happen quite fast. And I think that if people give it a, a, a opportunity, uh, I have these fraternity brothers that I was uh, went to college with and, and where I got this name, the Brooker and Kellen, good point about people giving you the nickname. You don't give it yourself. People give it to you, the Brooker and that gratitude guy. And they'd always call me. I need a dose of the Brooker. You're Mr. Motivation. You're Mr. Inspiration. I need to talk to you. And so that worked for a while. And so now when they call me, uh, I'm kind of doing, I'm kind of down. Um, do, you, do you think you can give me a dose of inspiration? I need a dose of the Brooker. And I go, I have a question. Have you written in your gratitude journal yet? And they go, no, I just hang up on them. I just press the red button. Just done. And, and they call back and they go, I think we got cut off. I go, no, we didn't. I hung up on you. I said, go write in your gratitude journal and then call me back. And so, because that's how big of an impact, it can make a difference. And one of the things that, as I grab one, one of the things I noticed now, I haven't, here it is, the Brooker's Daily Gratitude Journal. I haven't written in it yet today, uh, but I will as soon as we hang up and I've got some juice and, and get my day started after the podcast with you fine young men. And, but the thing that's interesting, I'll, I'll be talking and, and they'll see, here's my journal wow. with every single day and, and people will be buying the journals afterwards. And is this yours? Can I look at this? I go, sure. You know, I don't want them to read it too closely, but they look at it you know, and they take it out and they thumb through it and they go, wow, you write in this every day. And I go, were you listening to the talk? <laughs> yeah. No, I write in it occasionally. I want you to write in every day though. But me, I just write occasionally, you know, so it, it really, really makes a difference. Um, How do you, and this is probably one of the hardest things people in life, you know, fine is after a death, after a tragedy, and I don't mean, you know, you dinging your car, because that's not a tragedy, but to some people, that's the worst thing that's ever happened to them. But I know with losing loved ones, 
Um, how do you, you know, get even, where's the, the gratitude, gratitude, especially like your wife, 38 years young, um, you have these li little kids, whatnot, where do you pull the gratitude from? Well, that, that's a very good question. And I think because as you're asking, and I was thinking one of the things that is important to allow yourself is understanding you've got Kellen, you've got AL, you've got David, you've got three totally different individuals here that the progress or the process rather of, of getting better, of, of dealing with this, of digesting that whatever word you want to do is different for everybody. And so gratitude becomes something, if you can do it, that's fine. But somebody can say, you tell me what I'm grateful for on the day today after two days after my wife has passed away or whatever. And I wouldn't have much to say. So I know it's very difficult. So I tell people that put gratitude in when you can, after you have something tragic and truly tragic like that. But at the same time, recognize that there is a process and every day you get farther and farther away from the event or whatever that has happened. It's a little less painful. It still hurts. It never goes away. It'll always be in your mind but it's a little less painful. And then you can dial in the, the gratitude piece as well. And I think uh, another way that I would answer that is that I use a little scale on here called the one to 10 scale. And right up in the, in the corner, it has right over, right over here, it says the daily number. And on this number, I was a nine. And I tell, you, I tell people, rate yourself every day, one to 10. 10 is the best day of your life one is the worst day. And if I'm having a really bad day and I am a two or a three and I'm just depressed or I'm just like, what's the point? Or just, you know, it's very personal for people. But if you're having something when you're really struggling, I go back to the basics. I'm grateful that I got a hot shower this morning. I'm grateful I slept in a warm bed. I'm grateful I got good friends. I'm grateful that I have money in the bank. I could go get a nice sandwich if I wanted to or breakfast or whatever it might be. So it's, it's really a matter of just taking steps forward and realizing that there's some days something just hurts, put a bandage on it and just try to get to tomorrow and hopefully be better tomorrow. But, but gratitude is just such a great, such a great framework to, to work around because even when something's tragic that's happened to somebody and, and I had a, a lot of different losses, there's still a whole bunch of stuff that's good. And when we kind of, especially the age that I've gotten now and you realize, wow, there's not as much runway in front of me anymore. You realize that there life is, is at the end, we're all going, we're all leaving, you know, at least this earth. And so that's not particularly the best ending. You know, it's all, I, I knew him back then. I knew her, you know, that kind of thing. But so what are you going to do between your birth date and that other date? And that's, if you can put a mindset that is grateful it's just a better way to live and it's, it's just more positive. And, and I'm, I'm always fascinated by positive versus negative. I'm a really positive guy. I can tell immediately well, you guys, you are, but I had a dad who was the most negative guy I've ever met. I, I just mm -hmm. didn't understand it as a kid. And then he took his own life and he was, uh, I'd go, good morning, dad. He'd go, what's good about it? <laughs> what kind of attitude is that with five kids? You know, and it was just, he was always complaining. So when we have those two dates, everybody celebrates our birthday. And then we have the other date when we pass on in between those, how about having gratitude for uh, just everything that we have during those, that, that time expanse there. And it's just such a better way to live. And another thing I noticed this, this the other day, Kellen, when we were at the table is more people are kind of joining too. People just want, people want to be around you. They just want to, they want to connect with you and like, is there anybody better than Rick Toms? I mean, you just <laughs> makes them laugh. You know, yeah. I want to be like him when I grow up. Wait a sec. He's older than I am. You know, but it's, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just a better way in my opinion to live. At least to me. No, that, that that's true. And, 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 and that energy that Rick Toms has is, yeah, it's amazing. And people mm -hmm. always will be attracted to that type of positive energy um, so no, I, 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 I get it. I, I get it. I get it. The, the, the thing though, and, and your, your dad with five kids sounds like he had a lot to be grateful for, mm -hmm. yep. but, uh, you know, um, but the, the, the burden of, uh, maybe just, just life, uh, what, what are some of the things 
that besides writing it down, are you, are you a spiritual or um, religious person? Um, does that tie in? Um, talk about that. Yes, it does. And it, it's interesting. I've had enough talks in churches. I'm a spiritual person, a Christian, and I do talks in church and I've got some really nice ones where they've filmed them on top of the big screen with the big you know, screens in the background and that kind of thing. And then I've had companies that uh, will say, now, you're not going to talk about God, right? Mm. I mean, you're, you're not going to bring mm. up Jesus. Okay. Are we mm. cool with that? <laughs> I've, I've, I've had those ones and yeah, they, yeah. Get, disappoint, they get disappointed. <laughs> exactly. And, and I think that when I think about the religious or spiritual aspect of it, I think of how I tell people what I am so fortunate for is my blessings and my abundance. And if you make a list of everything you have or just everything you got to be grateful for, this is your abundance. It's a very, very long list. Well, your blessings to me are, are things that are given to me that I can't control. Mm -hmm. I'll be a month and I go, are you kidding me? You're 70 years old. Everything still works. You know, the, the legs, the knees, the arms, the, the joints and all that kind of thing. Well, that's a blessing. I mean, I, I had, I had a little control over it, but not a lot. You know, there's some people you just, it's one of those things. So to me, um, that's a very important part, part of it for me, but I, but I want to be almost non-denominational when I tell people, if you have this, this mindset, you write these things down and you think about it and you extend the message yourself. Uh, one of the things that's, that's really helped me is on, we all have, life kind of goes like this and we all have the up and down days. And one of the things that's helped me maybe more than anything else on a very personal note, especially around the spirit out, spirit out, spirit, spirit out, I can't even say it, being spiritual, let's put it that way, aspect mm -hmm. is that I get so many notes from people that tell me the impact, the gratitude journal or the talk or the workshop or uh, the videos, I do a lot of videos, uh, have on them. And it's just neat when you get to impact people and show them this vehicle, which a lot of people seem to know about it more and more, but I'm still amazed how many people have never heard of a gratitude journal. I've never heard about this concept of focusing much the same way the positive mental attitude movement probably started 20 years ago, 30 years ago, uh, makes such a difference. So it's, it's just really uh, it's, I guess I just sort of take that message to whatever group I have. I kind of tailor it. Helen, you probably do the same thing. I mean, you kind of, you find out who those people are and there's pieces of that you can tailor it. So I'd say the same thing from the spiritual standpoint to maybe the, somebody that's uh, not as concerned about it or doesn't want you to bring it up type of thing. So. Nice. Nice. Now, David, um, with the workshops, the, uh, the, the corporate talks, the keynote speeches, um, are you looking to, um, add any other, um, weapons to your arsenal? Um, anything digital besides video? Um, have you looked into perhaps, um, maybe, uh, affirmations of gratitude, so to speak, for people to listen to, maybe mm -hmm. repeat while they're out and about, that sort of thing? Definitely. There's, there's always so many, um, vehicles, uh, AL. And I think that when Kellen said, I mean, let me think about you on this podcast. And I was like, gosh, I didn't think I'd like to do some podcasts and, and just talk to people about how gratitude has impacted their life and maybe their story resonates with somebody else. So, but, but to your point, in the meantime, I've looked at, um, gosh, so many different things where I started out with the talks and then that became the workshops and the videos. The video one for me has been a really, really big one because YouTube has just exploded in the last five or 10 years. And it's so easy to get snippets of information. And so I've done some of all the social media platforms. I certainly do Facebook and I do um, YouTube and I do a little bit of Twitter and some little bit of Instagram. And so there's all of these out there. And so I'm always, to add to the arsenal, absolutely. I'm always looking to figure out what other way can I get this message out there. And that's one of the reasons why I like podcasts is because you can do podcasts with Zoom or and, and live feeds and that type of thing. You can also do a lot that are just like on the radio. 
And I was reading a book the other day that I really appreciate about all these forms of getting your message out there. And one of the things he said about podcasts is it's one of the classic examples of something that can be consumed by somebody's driving. And it's a little more difficult to watch a video when you're driving, of course. And uh, if you have it on your phone, you're not supposed to be, of course. And, right. But you can be driving and just listen to all that great information. And that's what a podcast does. So I would see that. And, uh, uh, and the affirmations, you mentioned affirmations, Al, And that's a, something I haven't thought about as much lately. I have about 15 or 20 affirmations that I use. But I do need to add that because that's another one that, that can help individuals to look and see and just recite these aspects of, in this case, what they're grateful for or all their blessings and just, again, plant them in the brain every day. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be adding more things that'll have just, you're, you're just looking for more ways for people to consume your content for lack of a better term, you know, and, and people have all these different ways that they want to do it. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely be looking for more ways to spread that that knowledge out there. In fact, it's funny because even on this, I just mentioned if you write about it and, and it's like a dream, but if you, if you write about it, it empowers you on this journal. And yet I'll be in a Starbucks writing in my gratitude journal. And I, I don't see one person in that Starbucks with a lot of people that has something known as a pencil or a pen or a piece of paper. You know, it's like, it's all these things that we have these computers and here I am. Who's the guy in the corner writing that little book? <laughs> I think I'm writing in this book because it's going to make a difference and to put it in my brain. And they've proven that, that writing, as I said earlier. So uh, I think there's some things that are blends of old and new. And I think writing in this, another thing that you, is really cool. You can go back and think what happened. I remember what was I doing on December 5th and you can go back and look and I'll make little notes podcast with Kellen and AL and, and, and so forth. And, and I'll make a Connor call today from San Diego and, and I'll put things in the corner and it's really cool. And especially on a day that you have a, uh, a, when I use this daily number, when you have a number that's a two or a three or four or five, and it's not a good day, I like to go back and look and see what I wrote. So it's really handy to, to save these and then reference them at a later date. So, but yeah, it's, there's just a lot of different vehicles out there that are really cool to get, get the message out. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You bet. You bet. And, and I'm writing as we go here. My wife is a different type of uh, millennial, much younger. Um, mm -hmm. And I, and I, I, I think I, um, she says, I just hit the cut, like the, the, the very cliff of it and I'm hanging <laughs> off. But um <laughs> You know, I said we're the we're the start of it, says um, <laughs> says Google. But the the, the writing is a big thing, and now everyone is you know texting. And now I even think sometimes I'm old school because of the autonomous cars and how many and you know, and, and, and that that's coming out. But I I feel you with, with mm -hmm. to say all that. But with the 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 gratitude, we just don't like to give the game. We like to um, don't just like to get it. We like to give it. And AL, that was a great thing. But David is also a pilot. And right. I could see a gratitude, you know, take him up in the Cessna or the Piper um, and, and cut that engine. I, and I only know about the Cessna <laughs> and Piper because my friends we grew up with and who they're pilots now and my cousin who is now as well. You know, when you cut that engine, oh, you're going to be thankful when it cuts back yeah. on midair. Yeah. But can, can you talk about how flying you know, helps with your gratitude. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great, uh, Kellen, I have to commend you. I've, I've never had that question before. That's an excellent question. And I think back when I learned how to fly and the cutting of the engine, they do that a lot. So you're trained to figure out where to land in an emergency situation. And it is really disconcerting to go along and he goes bang and he pulls apart and the, it props just idling like this and it's not doing anything. And where would you land? What would you do? Why would you pay attention? Where's the smoke? You see anything going in which direction, which are you, which way would you turn the plane? How would you have this? Would you pull the landing gear down? You know, and it's like, God, you hold on a sec. I'm going to die. So it's, it's really a great example of taking for granted something that just hums along every day. In this case, the engine to the Piper, to the Cessna, and, and then you, you pull it off. So I, I think, one thing that comes to mind for me is how every so often, not often, I'll forget to write in this gratitude journal. And I can tell. I can tell my day has just not been, has been uh, framed in the, the proper framing of focusing on all my blessings and things. And so I think uh, the, the airplane analogy is really great because 
another thing about flying that I really liked, and I would uh, I would think about it the other day when all of us at the table were talking. You notice how many people had a lot of things going on, and you could just tell just in just in just in going around the the, the table and listening to people talk about things. And I always like the analogy of of juggling a lot of balls, and most people can juggle a lot. Not I shouldn't say most people, but people that are really driven have to and do juggle a lot of balls. Well, when you're a pilot, you have to do a lot of things and you have to be, you have to pay really a lot of attention and you got to focus on all the stuff. There's all these gauges, your feet do things, your hands do things, your eyes do things. You got the mic, you got to talk to the tower, you got to drop this, you got to, all hands are moving. And I used to kind of use it, especially when I worked at Nordstrom and uh, later at Lowe's about how to me, it was kind of discouraging because the average person didn't do a really good job of, I guess you could call it multitasking, but they couldn't handle more than one or two tasks. And when you're looking at that dashboard and all these, these gauges and all these dials are telling you information you got to pay attention to, I realized it was a relatively small percentage that could handle everything. So as a result of it, it's like even on the gratitude journal, I would just tell people, I, I, I dare I say, I had to kind of dumb it down a little bit. And I would say, well, you know what, instead of writing, I mean, you can see every day there's a complete narrative. It takes me five minutes. It's all it takes, maybe six minutes. But people say, well, that's quite a bit. Could I just write down? I said, you know what, tell you what, why don't you do this? Why don't you just write down three things? We've heard that a lot. Why don't you just write down three things? And so you try that. And we'll start with the three things, and then pretty soon it'll be two more, three more, whatever. And and that's where I like that analogy with the flying because the guy would say to me, just let's just concentrate on one gauge. All we're going to do today is just going to learn this gauge right here. And then tomorrow we'll do one. And go eventually, at some point, you knew this whole instrument panel. And so I think for people, it, it's just it goes back to learning style. And when I'd say to people, just write down three bullet points. You don't have to go into the big narrative. In fact, as an example, I would say, as I mentioned, I write here this morning in a bit, but um, I'm reminded of how happy I am for the amount of friends I have in my life. That was that was a, one of the sentences I put yesterday, you know, because and it might have been after meeting you guys or it being at the tower club that day i don't think i've been there for a couple of days and so forth but any of those things that that just works for me it's a narrative and it goes through and it just plants it all here and, and, and it's better so i think whether it's learning a gauge one day at a time or um a person's learning style i do a i do an exercise that has people with these three by five cards it's one of my favorite things to do i do it at the start of my talk I had a talk on Sunday night, so I just am fresh from a recent one. So A.L. and Kellen partner up, and each have a three-by-five card. And mm -hmm. it says, you are, in the upper left-hand corner. And then Kellen writes A.L., and A.L. writes Kellen. So in the right-hand corner, you are, and this your partner. And then you sign your name at the bottom. And then I give you 60 seconds to describe how you see your partner. Mm -hmm. You are you are happy you are energetic you are whatever so i've seen people just writing like crazy and so then done 60 seconds now take 30 seconds each and read to each other what you just wrote about and every word that person says to you you want to go thank you thank you. you're really handsome you're really you're driven you're ambitious oh thank you thank you and so you go all through this but then i tell them now uh once you're done exchange the cards so now you can see it written so you heard it what that person said. So that's one thing. So we listen through hearing and then, uh, or learn through listening rather. And then now you see those words, ambitious, driven, handsome, productive, you know, all those kinds of things. And then when you see it, your eyes see it and it plants it even better. And the reason I do that exercise is then I say to people now by show of hands, how many people will hold on to that card? Every single person raises their hand, 90%. And I go, well, wait a minute. Why is that? Because are you, look at this card that Kellen just wrote about you, about me. Are you kidding me? And I said, well, why is it then that that card means so much to you? Why do you notice that how much he saw you? Why do you see yourself in such a less light than he does? Why did you say things to yourself you would never say to a friend? And I tell people, I used to call myself a word I won't even say anymore, but I'll spell it. And I could almost spell it out. It was called L-O-S-E-R. And I would never call myself that again, but I used to. 
And I thought, why would you do that? So it's back to the, the question about the cockpit. It just depends on learning styles and how a person can learn and to see it and to hear it and to feel it and to touch it. Whatever works, you're trying to get through as many people as you can. And, and, and there's even another thing too on this that just comes to mind. I want I used to give these to a lot of people. Just here you go. I'm just giving it's a 50 it sells for $15 on Amazon. I just give it to them. And I talked to them later. Did you write, have you been writing in your gratitude journal? No. Did I notice if I charge them $15? Oh, I write it every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's that skin in the game. And um, you, you just want, you want to do everything in your power to explain to them how gratitude can impact their life. And so even if it's, if it's trickery sometimes, but it's, uh, you, you just adapt to a lot of people's styles and what works best for them, I guess is, is the answer to that. So anyway. Okay. Here's a question for you, David. Mm -hmm. and, um, 2019 uh, comes to a close. Um, mm -hmm. have like three, three and a half more weeks left. Yes. In the, maybe four. Um, you know, what are a um, handful of things that you're thankful for this year heading into the next? Great question. When I have people, when we do exercises about writing in the gratitude journal, we also will take that same three by five card I talked about, flip it over and write some things you're grateful for and see how that changes your mindset. Uh, for me, it's almost always uh, my health is number one. And I think that. I have watched so many people pass away, so many people um, get sick, uh, suicides, you know, accidents, different things that happened. I am just so blessed. I said it earlier when I just touch my wrists and my knees and my hips and everything works and I just think, how did I get so lucky? So it's really my health is, is something that is always at the forefront of my mind. It's in my journal. Mm -hmm. virtually every single day and then my sons because having bounced back from um a lot just some real real tough times my my youngest connor was four when dana passed away i had to uh put him through kindergarten uh twice and first grade twice and then he couldn't play sports and he tried to play sports and he finally became a big star in baseball and and it was just really um there, there was this one time I won't spend a long time on the story now, but he had this game winning hit and uh, they carried him off the field and it was just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. He'd been told he never even got to play T-ball coach pitch. All he just Alice was in the dugout, but he hung in there. So I'm just so blessed for both of them. Kyle is 35. He works at Microsoft and Connor is 25 and he uh, works for Pepsi down in um, San Diego and he just graduated from San Diego state. So when, when you're two, I read this the other day that somebody said, if you're a parent, if your kids are doing well, you're doing well. Mm. And I thought, that's really true. I mean, it really is. If, if they're happy, you're happy. And so I would say it's my kids, uh, both my sons next. And then I think after that is just something that I think I would imagine the three of us are probably on the same page is just continually spreading the message, reaching more people. Cause you just always want to, when people say, Oh, I really like what you said, Kel and I was so impressed. I, I took away this, you know, I love the term. What was your biggest takeaway? Uh, AL. I remember when you said so-and-so and that was, you know, that really meant a lot to me. When you hear that kind of thing, it just reinforces it and you want to do it more and more. So mm -hmm. to me, it'll be kind of doing more of the same and more talks and more seminars and more books and more videos and uh, new platforms as we were talking about earlier. So yeah, those are the things that I look at 19. It's been a good year, but I've got some pretty lofty goals for 2022. So 2020 as well. So yeah, it's going to be, I think it'll be a good year coming up too. Nice. Um, and then a one more, one follow-up. Um, can you attribute, uh, having such, um, uh, like a grateful mindset, positive mindset to having such a, I guess, uh, a fulfilled life or like a, a better, better healthy living because of your mindset? Oh, I, I think, I think so definitely. And I think it's another thing that's really important to remember is it takes as long as it takes and it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Now age is just a number. I understand that. 
but I can look at you fine two young gentlemen and probably add your two ages together and know I'm still older if I combine <laughs> both of you. So it's just, there's some things that just as we, we go along, but I, I, I think it's so important to understand never ever give up on your dream and it's never too late. And I use examples of, uh, Colonel Sanders was 63 when he started uh, Kentucky fried chicken and Ray Kroc McDonald's was 58. Mary Kay Ash cosmetics, 57, uh, JC Penny, I think was 54, something like that. And so I was 62 when I started doing this. And so it's, it's never too late to pursue your dream. And if you keep focusing on what you have, and that's that gratitude mindset, as you said, AL, uh, it'll keep directing you to, I think what is ultimately your passion. And I think that one of the modules that I teach is find yourself, find your passion, find your purpose. I think the most important relationship that you ever have is with yourself and how you like that person in the mirror. And I think if you have a good relationship there, I think next, if you find your passion, uh, you will probably then find your purpose. And people ask me a lot about the passion and, and well, you're all into this gratitude thing, but what about me? And I said, well, you know, it's the old line. I've loved this line. What would you do if you had a million dollars a day? It was deposit in your checking account every day. You couldn't possibly spend it. So you, you bought what you needed to do or whatever, but you couldn't spend it. What would you do then? And it, it, it'll do, it'll give you a good idea of what your passion is. And for me, especially going forward is that I, I'm just so thrilled when people tell me that you changed my life, that I, I just want more of that. And so if I had a million dollars in the account every single day, I'd do the same thing I'm doing right now. You know, I just do more of it, you know, and, and explain it to more people because there's something about, I've never understood, this is, this is a, uh, a thought of mine around this. I maintain that if, I, if the three of us went down on the sidewalk and, or in a mall where people are going by, we asked 10 people, I'm David, this is Kellen, this is Ale. The three of us, we're going to start uh, the three guys hot dog stand or whatever. My, my contention is nine out of 10 people would tell us what's wrong with it. Do you guys know anything about hot dogs? Well, that's stupid. I mean, you know, it's like, what, what are you at a ballpark or something? How are you going to compete with ballpark Franks? I, I could tend nine out of 10 people will tell us what's, you guys have any, any, you don't, look, you don't look like the three brightest guys I've ever seen. What's with you guys? I mean, I, I maintain that's what nine out of 10 people would tell us. So I want to know who determined that nine out of 10 would be negative. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what happened to that? Who, who made that? our brains that way. So to me, my, my own father, as I mentioned earlier, it just seems like a lot of people are negative. Don't you know that nine out of 10 businesses fail? Don't you know that so-and-so? I mean, it's all around us. So to me, to, to stem that tide and to push positive and to push gratitude and to show people the benefits is really exciting. And, and then when they tell you how much you've impacted their life, it's like the coolest thing. It's just like the coolest thing that I guarantee you, you guys get told all versions of that doing what you're doing. And it's like the coolest thing. So it's like, so you just want to do, you just want to do more of it. So that's what, that's what I think. And, and I just offer gratitude is just, and the gratitude journal and the gratitude mindset, attitude to gratitude, gratitude turns what you have into enough. I just offer all that is an alternative to this massive negative that is out there in the world about all the things around. We're just here for a short period of time, 60, 70, 80 years, whatever it is, is not the longest time. Mm -hmm. And why do you want to be negative? And when you can have this mindset. So it's, it's fun when you can kind of convert people and show them it's a much better way to, to live and a much better way to think. I think though, with that negative, I've, I've learned, and I think most people who are enjoying their life, um, especially entrepreneurs, have learned to take that negative and flip it. I almost need it. I almost need you to tell me, oh, you guys are going to podcast. That's a waste of time. And yeah. then I'm going to say, okay, well, maybe I need one, two. I even have a podcast where my wife and I, it's totally anonymous. We, I don't argue for free. Let's get on this podcast and we're going to monetize <laughs> the issues that we know we're not the only ones having. We won't use our real names. I won't promote it because you won't give me permission and you have a real life. But being able to turn that negative energy and saying, boom, I'm going to show you and then say, well, you know, um, 
here you go. And, and people get inspired by those things. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it's a beautiful thing. Your whole, this next question, and it's a question we ask all of our guests, and it, you, your whole platform is about this, but what is your community give back that you are doing or that maybe there's something you haven't done that you want to do? Um, what is that for you? Well, I think at least initially, the biggest thing that I do is I do a ton of uh, free talks. And I remember I started off doing because I wanted to get this message out to so many people. But I also knew at some point I wanted to support myself coming back from leaving the corporate world, uh, putting Connor through school down at San Diego State was six figures and working two and three jobs to do that. So I thought it's not I didn't set out well, I'm going to do this and I make a bunch of money but I'm going to do this. And at some point I can become a paid speaker, a paid workshop facilitator, sell my books, whatever. So, but one of the biggest things that's been really helpful to me is it's churches, it's community centers, it's YMCA, it's uh, rotary, it's chamber of commerce, it's lions. It's all those types of service organizations. I still go in and do my half hour uh, talk for free. And it just and, and reach a lot of people and particularly where I've gone into high schools and uh, junior highs and I've done a lot of that just as sort of a way to give back to the people because I want them to see that gratitude too. And where I end up getting most of the, where, where I make my money is the bigger corporations and the bigger associations, conventions, th things like that. So that started out. In fact, I think that I looked at my Excel spreadsheet the other day as an example and I think I've done 600 and some odd talks now in six years and I think 500 of them were free. And so at least that's probably a lot of it was to get good to understand what I'm doing, but a lot of it was to give back too. And so, and another part of that Kellen is I would say that's going to evolve as I get busier and get more, more known, if you will, sell more books where I can see that giving evolving and, and becoming other things as well. Cause I think that's, uh, extremely important part of what what we do what I do and what a person should do uh, I, I keep talking about the blessings and abundance and I think gosh I'm blessed with the ability to communicate this message to talk to to uh, have ways of delivering the information so that people get it as we said earlier so I feel very fortunate to have those blessings and to give back is will continue to be and probably even more so in the future a big part of it as well so it's a great question well, awesome, awesome! I I, I love it that um, and, and we and I think millennials need to see this because right now everyone's twenty, thirty. Some folks are thirteen, and they're <laughs> they're saying, "Oh, I have this business, business," and you don't hear people talking about you know savings as much, retirement. And then I, I don't really believe in retirement because like you said, if you had a million dollars a day or if you had a hundred thousand, if you could spend that in a day reckless, mm -hmm. then there's some issues that you aren't really yeah. grateful <laughs> in, <laughs> right. in, in life. But to say, you know, life is as it's what you make it. Ayo, did you have any closing remarks? Um, well, David, it's a, Thank you for your, your time. Um, and your it's been absolutely phenomenal. Um, I don't know about you, Kel, but definitely this is that, that boost to get through the rest of the week, you know, kind of just shift, shift the mindset for sure. De definitely. De definitely. Especially if when you're stressed out, which I show, I don't show it real well, but you know, there's 10 things that have to be done by 10 o'clock and, um, you just have to take it. I mean, what a blessing it is to be that, you know, occupied. I just have to be able to flip it and say, I almost would be depressed if I did have as much to do. Cause what would I do? Enjoy these gray clouds that we have, David. Here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking out on the gray sky. Oh, it's terrible out there. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I'm one who I like to be outdoors. Um, so if, if there's anything else you like to leave the audience with, let them know where they can, um, follow you, the best way to contact you so sure. they can, you know, um, connect. Sure. Thanks, Kellen. In fact, it's funny because I'm looking out my window towards Lake Sammamish and it's, it's just gloomy and gray and, and, is, and hopefully it's nice in New York City, AL, but it's, it's, it's Seattle weather out here. And uh, 
But to me, it's like having flown to see Connor last week for Thanksgiving. You take off in that plane, go through the clouds. It's all sunny up there. So yeah. there's sun up there. And so I know it's beyond those clouds. And again, it just depends on how you look at it. And, um, you know, that same father of mine, he would say stuff like, I'd say, well, it's, it's, it's so sunny. And he goes, don't you know it's going to rain tomorrow? <laughs> God, I guess if that's how you want to look at it. But, but no, I, uh, thank you so much, guys. And I would leave a couple of things just uh, contact-wise. Uh, David at that gratitude guy is one of my emails. I also have that gratitude guy at Gmail and then that gratitude guy.com is my website. That's got my speaking, my coaching, my life priority assessment, my books. There's a lot of things on that YouTube. I have a lot of followers on YouTube and that's David George Brooke. And there's all sorts of Monday morning minutes. And by the way, to, to all the listeners, if they have one of those easy texts to sign up, sign up. And Kellen, we were talking about this the other day. If you want to sign up for my Monday morning minute, every Monday I send out a one minute video on gratitude. There's I probably done, gosh, I don't know, seven or 800 of them every Monday, just to kind of get your week off to the right start. And that is you text the word grateful, G R A T E F U L grateful to four, two, eight, two, eight. That's the word grateful to 42828. And then it asks for your email and you get that and you're signed up. So um, the last thing that I would would close on is kind of the same thing that I close on when I do my talks. I call it the four T's as in the letter T. And it's text, tweet, tell, or telephone. And most people text. And so because we're on a podcast, uh, I just want you to try to just give me a favor and do this today. Take your phone and text somebody you love and use this word grateful and tell them how grateful you are to have them in your life. It can be husband, wife, friend, father, son, child, whoever it is, grandma, whatever it is. But sometime today, hopefully in the next, when we wrap up here, uh, just take a moment and just text to somebody and say, I'm just so grateful to have you in your life. And the reason why I just, I think this is so important is we don't do it enough. And then people, when I'm talking, they'll come up and they'll show me their phones and they'll go, Look, look, what, look at the text I got back. And it's so funny because someone says, I'm grateful for you. You know, I love you and all these things. And then people come up and they show me the phone. And they go, look at this one that says, I'm grateful for you too. What do you want? <laughs> and it's, it's supposed to be all positive. And then, and then another one recently shows me the phone like this. And, and it says, are you sure you sent this to the right person? Wow. And you think, <laughs> wow. And, and then lastly, there was once I was in a um, – performing art center in Bothell and all the seats went up to the edges and, and there was a lady about 10 or 12 feet from me in the stage and she was using the phone. And so most people text, but she was using the phone. I could hear her from the stage and she's going, you know, hi, honey. I just love you. I'm assuming it's her husband. Hi, honey. I just love you so much. And I just, I'm so grateful for you. And I just appreciate you. I don't know. Some speaker just told me to call you and tell you. <laughs> 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 don't say it's the speaker it's supposed to be from you so so take that moment today and text telephone tweet or tell somebody how grateful you are to have in their life it'll make their day i absolutely guarantee you because gratitude works every time so i'd say that works well, we thank you for coming on. I want everybody to go to thatgratefulguy.com and make sure you follow those directions because it won't kill you. Even if you kind of mean it today, it <laughs> will put a smile on somebody's face, guaranteed. Even if they ask you, my goodness, what do you want? I just wanted to say I love you. I, I mean, Stevie Wonder, come on. Exactly. But, David, thank you for that wisdom. Um, I, I, I can't wait to see um, the platform grow more and more. Thank and um, God bless you for all the speaking and more books. Thank you. Thank you, Kellen. Thank you, AL. I really appreciate it. All right. You guys have gotten the game. Make sure that you tap in to that gratitudeguide.com. Appreciate you guys. Be blessed. Have a good day.